welcome to Cello Tuesdays. I am Diane Chaplin. Uh, I have been stepping in and playing some of the live streams. Nancy Ives has been doing them for months, like half a year or so. She's been doing these Cello Tuesday live streams most weeks. I've done a few of them. Uh, I'm going to be doing first of the month uh, from from for as long as we do them. But um, I want to give a shout out to Nancy because she's been running tech for me. So if you've been watching the show, if you've seen me do other live streams, what you didn't see is that Nancy was behind the scenes pushing buttons um, from her house as I sit here from my house. Um, so I just want to give a, a shout out to her and thank her for all the tech work she's done. And I want to say that this is my first dip time not having a techie running things for me. And what I would love just for my own security to know that this is actually going out onto Facebook and the other places, if one or two people could just write in the chat, which I can see to say, yes, we can hear you, that would be useful for me so that I don't sit here wondering if this is actually going out. Thanks. Um, so this is sponsored by Portland Cello Project. And uh, I just, I want to say that we had such a great experience. Last week, we played our first live show in a 14 or 15 months um, at a really unique venue in Portland called The Lot at Zydell Yards, which is an outdoor uh, place near the waterfront. And there are these little pods that you can reserve. I see a bunch of comments and they probably say, yes, we can hear you. Great. Oh, from the UK. Oh, how fun. Oh, that's the composer of the second piece. You're up really late, Caroline. It's like 2.30 in the morning there. Um, so, uh, great. Okay. I got the comments. You can hear me. Thank you so much. I, th I actually super appreciate that everybody who just wrote. Um, so, uh, PCP played this, this outdoor performance and we're going to do another one on July 18th for any of you who've ever been to a Portland cello project, uh, show concert. Uh, you may know that we do this thing called extreme dance party and we're doing it under the stars at the lot at Zydell Yards Sunday, July 18th that evening. Uh, there are still some tickets available. You can go to the PCP website or the PCP Facebook page and find that info or just Google the lot uh, and you'll come up with that if you're in the Portland area. Um, if you want to check out what I've been doing, I started about a year ago doing a project called Bach Harmonized where I did these sort of kitschy <laughs> harmonizations that go along with the unaccompanied Bach cello suites and hopefully this month I'm going to be recording the fifth suite which is the fifth of them to be up there and then there's only one more left so uh, you can go find my website uh, or my Facebook page Diane Chaplin Cellist. Okay. That's all the promo stuff. Um, the um, program I'm doing today is called Britannica, and I've got three really special pieces to play. Uh, the first one is a piece that was not originally written for cello, nor was it actually is, is it written by a composer who was originally from Great Britain. It's by Handel. Uh, and those of you who know anything about Handel know he was born in Germany. He did become a naturalized citizen in the UK and is really considered one of the great English composers from the Baroque time. He's real famous for giant works like the Messiah with the Hallelujah Chorus and water music and, and royal fireworks music, which were things to be played outdoors for the king. Um, what he's less maybe known for is smaller pieces, and this is one of them. This is from a harpsichord uh, sonata, a suite, I think. Suite number five by harps harpsichord. By, try that again. Suite number five for harpsichord by Handel. Uh, it's an air and variations. And it became very, very popular. And someone a couple centuries later gave it the nickname Harmonious Blacksmith. Handel did not give it that name. Um, it is a theme in variations. And it's really a classic theme in variations in that it, it doesn't vary in size of the phrasing. It doesn't vary in speed exactly, but it does what classic variations do, which is it starts out with notes that go one, 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 and then they go one, two, one, two, one, two. There are two variations of then, and then it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and there's two variations that do that, and then it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So it sounds like it's getting faster, even though actually the basic pulse uh, is staying the same, and that's a real, real uh, classic trick for variations from this time period. Uh, you'll notice that uh, because it's a transcription from a keyboard work, uh, oh, by it's transcribed by Gaspar Casado, who is a famous, famous Spanish cellist, and that a little bit ties into my last live streams, which were about music from Spain and Latin America. Um, so it's got lots and lots of times where the cello has to play more than one note at a time, double stops and chords, uh, which are 
challenging on the cello, but I think make a really, really beautiful sound. So this is the Harmonious Blacksmith by Handel as transcribed by Gasper Casado. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm really excited about playing. It is by uh, a woman who is living in the UK, originally from Canada. She's living in the UK right now. Her name is Caroline Bourdignon. Um, and she is a both a multimedia visual artist and a composer. And what she's especially interested in doing is combining those two things. So she does these wonderful paintings while music is playing, for example. Um, and really does a synthesis of uh, aspects of color, light, space, and time to make a unified whole out of these uh, somewhat disparate, possibly, uh, artistic expressions. Um, sound to color synesthesia is the description of, of when someone hears a, a musical tone, they see a color. And so that's one of the ideas that she's exploring with the um, music and visual thing together. So in this piece, which is called First Light, she explores the idea of creating the visualization of light with the sound of the cello. Um, this is a piece that was first performed in November. Um, it was written or at least finished last year. Um, and it was commissioned by Ovidiu Merinescu and performed in Wilmington. So this is only the second performance ever of this piece. Um, I found it kind of by chance as I was Googling women composers on, from Britain uh, on the internet, trying really hard to find something. I f I'm, I'm really trying to present a work by a woman on each one of these live streams. I feel that's important. Uh, and so I was completely thrilled to come up with this piece. I'll read you what she wrote about it. This piece explores light and reflects awaking and emerging after a period of sleep. And I, I haven't actually asked her about this, but I would like to suggest that it is um, reflecting awaking and emerging after a period of pandemic where we've all been a little tiny bit asleep. And I think this is the perfect time to be playing this uh, piece, which is exploring that idea. So some of the ways that the, the idea of light um, are portrayed in the piece uh, are by the use of harmonics. Harmonics is when the string is touched lightly and a high sound <laughs> comes out that is not the normal sound that would be played there, um, as well as um, sliding glissandos on those harmonics 
to give this glimmering, shimmering kind of idea. Um, there's really quick changes of louds and softs, highs and lows, the way that you would get if you stepped from the bright sunlight into shadow or darkness. Um, there's a contrast between the pale sound of the harmonics. They make a very ghosty, uh, refracty kind of sound. Um, and then more passionate passages, um, which are, are really meaty on the cello. Um, there's, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, also channeling Nancy Ives here because she has written compositions wh where the cellist sings also. And so if you think you hear me humming, you are correct. There's a bunch of humming. It's uh, not exactly singing maybe, but it's humming uh, that uh, underpins the, the cello playing. And then I think one of the most important things about this piece is the use of silence which is somehow undervalued in music, maybe. Um, but I, I think in, in the, this piece, the transitions to silence and, then, and the silence between phrases, which is all very written out. It's not like, oh, just wait here. She's, she's been very, very specific about the amounts of silence are, um, again, the idea of is it, is it light? Is it dark? Is it something in between? And I think the silence really brings a lot of that into, into perspective. So this is First Light for Solo Cello by Caroline Bourdignon. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you for staying up late to watch that, Caroline. <laughs> she is in England. So the next piece that I'm going to play, so I just, I'm, I'm excited to have gotten to play that piece, and I hope I get to play it more times. Uh, if you are interested in getting it, you can find, uh, search for her website. You sh I also actually recommend that you go look at her, her visual art that she has on there, because it's really wonderful. Um, Okay, so the next piece I'm going to play was the piece that basically inspired this program. This is my COVID piece. Um, I fell in love with this piece right like last year in March, and I started learning it, and I've played bits and pieces of it, but I've never played the whole thing all together. This is a sonata in G minor for solo cello by a man named Granville Van Tock, who was evidently a um, pretty well-known English composer in his day, his day being the late 19th and early 20th century. Um, kind of similar, similar um, time to Edward Elgar, but he, and he wrote really a lot of pieces, um, but we all know almost nothing of him now. He wrote several things for cello. Um, this sonata is in four movements, and it, um, the movements are, the first movement is an introdu introduction to the second, and the third movement is an introduction to the fourth. Um, and it, it is, it, it's a funny piece. Um, the, the, both of the kind of intro movements are really rhapsodic. They are written without bar lines or time signatures that makes them sound kind of abstract, but they're not. It's a really romantic piece. Um, but, and they, they're both written like basically play this however you want. I mean, it's, it's written out with rhythms and notes, um, but with a huge amount of freedom. And then the second movement and the fourth movement, which are the ones that follow those, are very strict and very uh, kind of classical in form, um, sort of a romance for the second movement, and what we call a moto perpetuo for the fourth movement, which means that it moves uh, unceasingly fast notes the whole time. Uh, so this is the four movement sonata in G minor, G minor by Granville Bantock. Maybe I'll tune. <laughs>
is the sonata for solo cello by Granville Bantak. Uh, I want to invite you to tune in on the other Tuesdays, 6.30 Pacific time of this month where Nancy Eyes will be playing. I'll be back again the first Tuesday in July and the first Tuesday in August, and we don't know how long we're going to keep doing this, but that's the plan. Um, also go check out Portland Cello Project, tickets to our July 18th show here in Portland. Extreme Dance Party is going to be a great event. Um, I'm going to peek at the comments just to see what people are saying. People liked the band talk. That's great. I'm glad. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic piece. It's one of those, why don't we know who this composer is, right? And there's so few pieces written for solo cello. One of the things that um, I'm trying to do and Nancy's trying to do with these Cello Tuesday broadcasts, which have always been, like, with maybe one or two exceptions, completely solo cello, is to try to bring awareness and expand the solo cello repertoire. So for instance, I'm so thrilled that we had the piece by Caroline Bourdignon, because there's an expansion of the repertoire. And in fact, I see John Hidalgo, who is a composer who has just completed uh, a sonata for solo cello that one of my students is going to be playing this summer. So we're out there trying to expand our solo cello repertoire as we can. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next month. Bye!